Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the F122 My Team Save here on the Chesnoy Plays channel. Thank you for your continued support on this save. I know it's not getting as many views now as it used to because I've had that massive COVID break. But those of you that continue to come back day after day on stream and day after day here on YouTube, it really does mean the world to me. Thank you so much for doing so. Hopefully, we can reward you throughout the course of this save with more and more entertainment and hopefully the progression curve up the rankings. We've currently find ourselves still the second slowest but we've been getting some more competitive results recently a 14th in the netherlands and 11th in singapore a 12th in france hungary was frustrating because of various different scenarios spa was hit and miss and monza was just weird but here in japan it's a track that traditionally i don't do well at but having driven here with the new cars in an online session I actually kind of enjoyed Suzuka, but how that's going to translate to a My Team car, specifically a not very good My Team car, not yet sure. Hoping for at least dry conditions, which we get. Oh, teculation, teculation. Regulation changes are, are here. As soon as you can, I want you to look at the developments we have and tell us what areas you want to invest in protecting. So then, let's find out what we're going to be having development-wise. Uh, weather forecast. Oh, there you go. New attachments. Lots of stuff done. With uh, well, 13 developments completed. I don't remember doing all that. Uh, oh, it's a wet quality though. It is definitely a wet quality. It'll be full wet in Q1 and Q2. And it will dry up for Q3. The race is probably going to be overcast for the majority, but should be dry for the full race. Right, so it's aerodynamics and chassis, which is where it's going to kill us. And it's everywhere. Nine parts at risk. And eight parts at risk in the chassis. Oh boy, we're going to have to save up some resource points now, aren't we? A lot of bloody resource points to just stay where we are. But that might completely mix up the field for next season. Uh, I think I need to go out to practice, don't you? And try and get some of those resource points because I need a lot of them now. So let's just dive in and try and get them done. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying, of course. It really does help push the content to new people. And leave your feedback in the comments section too. That also helps the content get pushed to new people and really helps the channel. So I appreciate it. Of course, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any further content. And follow me on Twitch. Come watch all the behind the scenes as well. But for now, practice time. I can't quite, can't quite hold my rear end around there, but it's still a good time. It's still a good time. I'm pretty happy with where the car is there, setup-wise and performance-wise. I'm still a little twitchy at the back end, but that was a, I mean, a second off Sergio Perez. Admittedly, he's on a medium, but still. Quali's going to be in the wet as well, which is going to be intriguing. So I'll retire from session. We did well enough in the practice programs. So I'm happy enough with that as well. We should get a decent amount of resource points haul. And I am quicker than my teammate there, which I actually haven't been for a couple of couple of race weekends in practice. So uh, actually, more confident for a Japanese Grand Prix than I think I almost ever have been. But that could potentially all come tumbling down in qualifying in the wet. Oh, Teo didn't get any resource points. Come on, mate. We've got about 7,000 years worth of resource points to try and get to have help adapt for the um, technical regulations, which are pretty harsh, to be honest, as is that weather. The technical regulations have pretty much reset all of our aerodynamic and chassis upgrades, which is an absolute nightmare, really. But... We're going to go out and quality here in the pouring rain and maybe get out of Q1. But in the wet, it's in, it's an entire unknown. I am set up for the dry. Sorry, Mick. I'm kind of ruining your lap here. You're lapping slower than your teammate. Your teammate is faster. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Not that your name's Jeff anymore. 
I'm going to go over two seconds faster. That's good enough for P22. We are starting dead fucking last. But thankfully, it's not going to be wet for the race. So we should be fine. I had nothing in the wet there. But in the dry, I'm a lot more confident. A lot more confident. How far off the pace was I in the wet there? I did like a 141 maybe? A 140.8. So I was a full second off even Joe. 1.4 seconds behind my teammate in the wet. In the dry, it's a completely different story though. That was just a nightmare in the wet, unfortunately. So to the race in the dry, please. Presumably, it did say it was going to dry up before the end of qualifying. So I imagine these tyres, these times have been set on dry tyres. And indeed they have, 128.9. Mercedes 1 and 2, which is a real surprise. Sainz and Perez 3 and 4. Ricardo and Bottas. So Verstappen and uh, Leclerc definitely taking penalties there. As you can see, Leclerc is going to start 8th. Was there any dry running in Q2, perhaps? Fettel and Norris also taking a penalty. It was dead quick. Ocon and Gasly, yeah. So there was there was dry running in Q2 as well, unfortunately. Magnussen 13th, Verstappen is 15th with his penalty. Uh, Latifi and Albon both taking penalties. I've basically given myself a new component in every slot because why would I not? I'm last. Taylor Porsche 19th with the penalty. And I am right at the back because I've got like a 45 place grid penalty. Now, I am hoping to make quite some progress forward throughout the course of this Grand Prix. Uh, everyone else is starting on softs other than Seb on hards. Seb, Albon and Tsunoda on hards. Everyone else on softs. So let's see what it reckons we can do. Okay, so tie-wise, tie-life-wise, I'm a little bit longer. So let's change that. That's There's barely any difference, but... It, I could supposedly do that, which is what I will try and do. If I'm not com as competitive as I thought or think I might be, then we'll go soft, soft, and then run mediums at the end. Okay, so th a three-stop definitely isn't an option, but the two-stop certainly is. So we'll do that. I don't know if we'll get lapped. There's 53 laps here, so I will take some, some fuel out, but I'll leave myself an extra lap because I'm not sure how we'll do fuel economy rise. Right, P22 start, but very much hoping to move forward. So, as we say, everyone on softs other than Fettel, Albon and Tsunoda. So they will be one-stopping hards to mediums in this Grand Prix. Whereas we will be two-stopping soft, medium, soft. Although we may well go soft, soft, medium, depending on how competitive we are throughout the course of the Grand Prix. We were going to do 14 laps on our softs, I think, try and extend it a little bit, but the undercut was very good for us in Singapore with that first stop especially, so maybe an undercut is the way forward here as well. I think drivers are out of position again on the grid, are they? And it's going to screw itself over and I'm going to have to restart session. Yep, Tsunoda's going to drive through the back of me and get stuck on me. Okay. Well, um, some of the formation lap uh, graphics or presets are Nicholas, Dis Nicholas Satifi has been disqualified. Lovely. Uh, Albon's been disqualified. Well, let's just uh, start the race. 20 second, 22 place grid penalty. Let me do that. And then let me restart session. Hopefully everyone's where they should be. No, then, well, nearly. Tsunoda should be in front of me. So I'm actually starting P21. And he's actually damaged my rear wing in doing so. So, cheers, Yuki. It's not, I'm not sure there's much I can do here. <laughs> Yuki, Yuki Sonoda is in my back, in my gearbox. As long as he doesn't drive into me and give me damage, I'm fine. And he hasn't this time. So, right, we're off. The Japanese Grand Prix, everyone. Here we go. Yuki on hards shouldn't be that competitive. I'm just being very tentative around these first few corners because you guys know what the first sector in Japan is like. So I'm not going to get too aggressive to start off with. But I'm feeling like we might have the chance of a half-decent race here. P22 for now, but expecting... Well, hoping, okay, sincerely hoping... 
to make progression forward throughout the course of the race. Zhou Guan Yu and Teo Porsche going side by side around Spoon. And Zhou Guan Yu comes out on top. I can start using my battery. We have fresh components in, so we are as fast as we possibly could be engine-wise. Well, they, they ease off a little bit around around there. I'm actually going to go up the inside of Yuki here into the chicane and try and make it stick. Teo and Zhou Guan Yu getting a bit side by side, a little bit of contact in there. Teo has gotten him back again. And we have gotten past Yuki Sonoda, but he's on hard tyres, so it's probably to be expected. And it's not the easiest to overtake into turn one because it's kind of a half an over half a braking zone, really, as a precursor for braking zone into turn two. And this is my first chance to really see how competitive we are through sector one with the AI. Because obviously first lap we were slow because it was all Constantine it up and we're not massively slow through there provided I get it right and provided I can manage my battery well enough I think we might be competitive here they accelerate off spoon 2 much faster than I do Alex Albon is a little bit of a blockade at the minute for Teo and Zhou Guan Yu here on those hard tyres Sebastian Vettel was the other one on hards wasn't it Curious to see. Yeah, look, if you look at the minimap, you can see how that green dot is in front of all the other dots as well. So Albon on his hards is holding us up, and Vettel on his hards is holding others up as well. That Red Bull back here, Max Verstappen. Oh, of course, Max Verstappen had penalties, didn't he? I was like, hang on a minute. It's a manly up change to eight there. We really need to get past Alex Albon, lads. Oh, he's gone defensive there. Zhou Guan Yu. He, well, ha! he went to, to defend from me. And by defending from me, actually earned himself two positions. How on earth has Zhou Guan Yu just done that? We're going to get Alex Albon here as well. He'll have the inside line. I managed to take Teo at the same time. And we just nipped across the front of Alex Albon there. And we'll have P19. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Now, it was important nice. that we got that move done because I want to make sure that I try and at least hang on to the back of Zhou Guan Yu to try and catch us up to the other group of cars in front. Alex Albon still stuck to the back of my car here through this section but that's no surprise because I suck at sector one. Now this, gang, this group in front are still stuck behind Seb. They are DRSing away from me a little bit at the minute but they're all stuck behind Seb on his hard tyres. There is an Alpha Romeo actually quite high up. Valtteri Bottas is P6, although to be very qualified P6, so fair play to him. Seb currently P10, so the points are just at the end of the straight at the minute, because Seb on those hard tyres is slowing everybody up. We're pulling away quite comfortably from Alexander Albon and Yuki Tsunoda. Teo, it sucks he's getting stuck behind Albon, but it is a, a relatively difficult circuit to overtake on, actually. So hopefully get something done in the pit stops, and strategy will come to him, just as we hope strategy will come to us. But for the first time, I think this season so far... In lap on race 18, there has been no incidents reported. No contacts, no penalties, nobody stopping for front wing damage, literally nothing. Everybody was so very well behaved through sector one, but it is basically follow the leader, so it's perhaps not too much of a surprise. If I can have a better spoon, then we might be within DRS range again says as he absolutely fucks spoon curve I'm going to use all my battery here this is a, a last ditch attempt to try and get within DRS range which has worked we are going to have DRS for the first time in a few laps took a lot of battery but it's worked, and we're now back with the gaggle, and we're hoping to get behind to three seconds. Now I'm going to try and stick with them, but I have to make sure I save my battery at the same time, because I'm going to need it later in the race. Tyres are definitely going to be on their way out now for all of these soft runners, and it won't be too long before we see pit stops. I might stop lap 12 rather than lap 14, so I expect the others might stop lap 13, 
and get a jump on me, and I'd rather get a jump on them. They don't quite carry enough speed around there, but now that we've caught up, look, it's all going to gaggle up here. And Zhou Guan Yu is actually having a look at Nicholas Latifi now. We're in the hunt. We do have a new rival, or a new old rival, a new rivalry set up, but it's the same person that we're in a rivalry with, Pierre Gasly, who obviously will have the edge on us after qualifying. So when you takes Nicholas Latifi, we hopefully will be doing the suit, although Nicholas is fighting back. Going to go down the inside into Spoon Curve. Now, this could get dicey. And it also brings me into the picture. Oh, that's really tight through there. I'm going to try to switch back. Latifi caught on the curb a little bit. We are not past Nicholas Latifi yet because he's got DRS. But with a bit of battery, we can stay ahead. I'm going to get stuck by Zhou Guan Yu here, though. No, he's backed off. Latifi's backed off a little bit. So P18. Okay, so we are boxing lap 12, which is a couple of laps earlier than planned. And I would have liked to have gone to the softs, but everybody in chat is saying mediums. And it's it's resounding. Everyone in chat's chain everyone in chat's saying mediums. So I am going with chat's decision. And we are going to the medium tire. It's a good stop. Now, I'm going to need to be rapid on my outlap if we're to undercut anyone else, which is the plan, to try and undercut. A handful of others are in as well. Okay, there's a number of drivers in the pit on lap 13. A lot of drivers in the pit on lap 13. Now, they're going to go to soft tyres. They're going to go soft, soft, with a view to going to mediums at the end, whereas we're now doing the opposite of that. I don't know if it's been the right call or not. And we won't really find out whether it's been the right call or not until the end of the race. And you've taken P21. P21. Not to P20, ahead of my teammate and Nicholas Latifi. Now with Lance Stroll and Pierre Gasly just down the road. Purple third sector. Is the fastest third sector of the entire Grand Prix. We do certainly seem to have the edge on everyone else in the third sector, but I am using a lot of battery in there too, which is obviously skewing it slightly. But we put in personal bests last lap in the first and second sectors as well, so we're obviously faster than we were on the previous tyre. You can see how the time falls away from us here. Checo is out. So he is retiring. Where is he? He's at the final chicane, Sergio Perez. So that's a place gained. Go backwards rather than forwards. And his power unit has, unfortunately for him, decided it wants to set fire to itself, which is not great news for Sergio, who's retiring at the end of the season, of course. But it's great news for us because it means we gain a place. Slightly concerning for myself and my teammate in that we have those power units in the back of our car as well. But I only have technical issues turned on, not mechanical issues. So the only thing that can happen to me is really a DRS issue, which we saw in Singapore. Because I want to do the 400% race distance for the content. Whereas my teammate could be susceptible to everything, really. But hopefully he'll be okay. We haven't seen Teo retire from any Grand Prix, to be fair. There is a yellow flag here for Sergio, but it's not going to be any sort of VSC or safety car for that. It would probably take someone crashing and leaving debris on the track to uh, to bring out a safety car here in Suzuka. Other cars coming out the pits in front of us. You see Zhou Guan Yu has gone to the hard tyre, which is a really strange choice. Is he trying to go soft, hard, and one-stop it, perhaps? Joe Guan Yu is going to be dead slow now on those hards. Especially whilst they're cold. But even when they're warm, that hard tyre was six tenths a lap slower than the, the medium tyre. And 1.2 seconds slower than the soft. So Joe Guan Yu is just going to be so uncompetitive. But hoping to save enough time to 
validate not having to stop again. Latifi's now right with me behind, as is Porsche. Now, we do not want to get stuck here behind Zhou Guan Yu on the hard tyres. We absolutely need to get past as soon as possible. Okay, Lance might have a look. Zhou has gone very defensive. Lance has gone even more aggressive. Got himself well out of position, but will hold the place to me, annoyingly. I couldn't fully commit there to go around the outside, but getting stuck by Zhou for another lap is just going to cost us so much time to everyone else in front. It's not helping our race at all at the minute, but I guess it is hindering those around us on the soft tyre who are going to have to move to the medium tyre later. I'd rather get hindered on my mediums, but mediums set and still have this full soft to be able to, or full soft thing to be able to go for it. We're not going to need to worry about fuel, I don't think. So Stroll is going to have a look through 130R at Joe. Not quite close enough, I don't think. But they have made significant contact with one another there. And we've got the run. I'm going to go for it on Lance. At the inside, well, I'm going to have to use my battery. But I've pinned him in there against Joe, who's gone defensive. But we've been able to nip up the inside of both of them. And that's two cars in one straight. Now then, let's try and close down those in front. Kevin Magnussen is on the hard tyre as well. Sat in front of Pierre Gasly. I'm really surprised that they've gone to the hard tyre this early. They may well be trying to one-stop it and go to the end. And if they do, then fair play to them. It seems everybody is soft harding. I'm the only one that's touching the medium tyre. So that either says that they're confident of taking the hards all the way to the end, or that they don't think the medium tyre will last long enough to be able to go back to softs later in the race. Meaning that they're going soft, hard, soft, whereas I've chosen to go soft, medium, soft, and I might end up having to go too long on either this set or the next soft set. It's a peculiar one at the minute. I'm not sure who's made the right call. We'll see what will be the defining factor will be what the soft, soft runners go to. Those that started soft like me and went to soft next, as I had intended, that will be, that'll be what opens our eyes and shows us what was the right thing to do. If they go soft, soft, hard, then we'll be set. I'd like to think for the end of the race where we should have significant pace over everyone else. Kevin doesn't have DRS either. There is an Aston Martin in the pits at the minute. Coming out now, Sebastian Vettel. Now he's gone to the mediums. Seb has gone to the mediums. But that's an, a pit stop that's out of out of sequence, so I presume Seb has pit there because he's had damage. He's gone hard medium. No, it's just a straight swap. So he's gone hard to 18, and then he's now going to try and take the medium tyre. 35 laps. Surely you'd want to stay on the hard tyre longer, unless he's going hard, medium, soft. I'm really not sure... Which strategy is going to come out on top here? But there are three or maybe even four different strategies at play. So it's a mystery. Not with any real pace. Anyway, Yuki is in and he's pit off his hards to go to mediums now. He's still in the pits. So we're coming past him now. He's just coming out of the pits there, as you can see. So I think... I think everyone has pit now. Everyone but Albon on his hard who has managed to get himself all the way up to seventh. Oh, I would imagine there's going to be quite a few people stuck behind Alex Albon. Have a look at the mini map. And yeah, look, going through the first sector, there is a Williams followed by a clump of other cars directly behind him. That other, that alternative strategy for him, hopefully, whilst he stays on those hards, although the other hard runners have already pit now. Alex Albon going as long as you might have thought they might do on that hard set. There you go. I was just about 
to say, I was thinking to myself, those that pit early, or those that went soft, soft, are going to start pitting again soon. And you can see the Ferrari that bit the bullet first of anyone is in the pits again. So expect those soft, soft runners to be pitting very soon en masse. Metals ahead of you. Our gap to the car in front is 8.7 seconds. They're on fresh mediums. Okay, their tyres are seven laps old. Your last lap time was a 134.0. Come on, mate, you're down by eight tenths a lap. What have you got? There you go. Their fastest lap, sorry, their last lap is three tenths faster than my fastest lap. But again, that, that, this is what I mean about them DRSing away from me. But the, there are a number of drivers in the pits now, including Gasly, who we were trying to chase. Teo's in as well. We should come out just next to Fernando Alonso, but thanks to warm tyres, we'll take him. So they they've gone so they have gone soft soft medium which says that we definitely can consider ourselves being able to go soft medium soft. So we're going to have some defending to do now for the next 12 or 13 laps. This is my knock on in the pits as well or he's coming out of the pits at the other end of the pit straight now. The closing speeds were a bit more than I thought they were going to be. He's going to be slow here because he's on cold tyres. This is one of my slowest parts of the track, though. Fernando's still sniffing. Okay, mate. Did he just make a, a late lunge for it? I mean, look, Fernando was never going to make that stick. There's not, there's a little bit of a gap there, but even as we approach the corner now, he's still not alongside me as I'm going for the apex, and he, even only here, does he actually get wheel to wheel? That was never, ever, ever going to work, Fernando. Ever in a million years. What are you doing, pal? Again, I'm, I'm still saying fastest laps, apparently, but I don't feel like I'm going that quick. Just shows how slow we were earlier in the race, or just how much of a difference car weight makes. Like, having burnt off all the fuel, I can be on 40% worn tyres and still set fastest laps, because the car weighs so much, so much less than it did at the beginning of the race. This is why I'm trying to put so much emphasis on weight reduction in the uh, research and development part. Although we now need to redo everything that we had previously done. We'll be going to a set of soft tyres in seven laps time. Teo has just been lapped. You can see by the minimap bottom left on the left hand side of it. My teammate has now been lapped. And I have another pit stop to make. So... We may well find ourselves getting lapped in this race. On oh, wide there. Oh, I mean, that was rude, Fernando, but fair enough. After all the stress we've put you through. That was like Seb on Lewis under the safety car in 2017. Just a quick wheel bash out of the way. And Fernando will disappear. How? That was really, really rude. Option. No, I'm not pitting early for hards. Go away. I already know that's what it's going to be. Thirty-eight for sauce. Thirty-eight for sauce. I can do. Just one lap earlier for a fresh set of soft tires is good with me for a minute. I thought he was going to ask me to to pit this lap and go to a set of hards because like. The softs aren't going to last, but no, he's not done that. Still come out 18th when we pit as it stands. Two laps away from said pit stop. 
Mick's not quite made it all the way to the back of us, but he has halved the gap. So in we come. Give me some fresh shoes, please. I want some boots. I want some new boots. Some big red ones. Right. Stroll is the one who we're probably going to be coming out in front of. And we are, as we do this, about to get lapped as well. Lovely 2.3 second stop. I am going to have to let the two Mercedes through very, very shortly. And I don't really want to get involved in that battle for the lead. Here they come. Go on. Go on. So 20 seconds we have to, to Gasly. I've got 20 seconds to try and make up in this final stint. Otherwise it's P18 for us. Probably lost more time getting lapped than I should have done, but still. Green flag. Okay, there's the yellow flag behind. I think it's just people getting slow off the line to let the McLaren through. I think it's because anyone actually has an issue. I might be able to sit with the Mercedes here. Might, being the main word. Definitely going to get DRS with them. We can watch the lead of the race unfold. Or the battle for the lead of the race unfold. Car just feels like it's on rails now. Just grips so well. <laughs> okay, gaps of the car ahead is Such a shame Quali wasn't in the dry. Could be able to stay within DRS range of Mercedes the whole time though. Purple sector three. We are potentially the fastest. Oh, sorry, purple sector two. We are potentially the fastest car on track right now. Purple sector two as well. 132, 272. Everywhere but the first sector, we are the quickest car on track. Very nearly. I think the fastest lap is actually a 131 something from Charles Leclerc, but. Sticking with the Mercedes, mate. We are sticking with the Mercedes. Our gap to the car in front is 16.8 seconds. I don't know if it's closing fast enough, because our tyres will obviously wear, and we'll be, we're basically just going to get slower and slower as this thing goes on. Tyres already 15% worn, like. Yeah, the gap's come down from 20 to 16, but still don't think it's enough. I think P18 might be all we get here. Uh, championship battle in this save is quite okay, is actually damned close. Seconds. Charles Leclerc leads the championship race in this save from about by about 19 points from Carlos Sainz. But closing on them are the two Mercedes, who in this race are one and two. George Russell, of course, won the last Grand Prix at Singapore. So we may end up, as we progress towards the end of the save, or end of the season, sorry, we may end up with a four-way title fight, which would be remarkable. Vamos. We've only got two laps of fuel left. That's okay. I've only got one lap of race left. As Charles Leclerc's lead at the top of the championship is going to come down somewhat. It'll grow over his teammate by a couple of points from 19 to 21 or 23, but it will close significantly more so to George and Lewis. Still going to be Charles Leclerc in first in the championship, but I think actually George, it's either George or Lewis, I can't remember who was slightly ahead of who, but that one of the Mercedes drivers was only two points behind Carlos Sainz. So, whichever Mercedes driver that was will now be ahead of Carlos Sainz and second in the Drivers' Championship. And with only four races to go, USA, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi, you couldn't call the Drivers' standings. You couldn't call the Drivers' Championship. It is genuinely a four-way fight. As George Russell sets the fastest lap on the last lap as he wins the Grand Prix, 
He's had Lewis Hamilton behind him for about 20 laps right up his back bottom, but potentially team orders called. Team orders aren't in the game. Oh no, Charles Leclerc steals the fastest lap point back. That might be crucial for the title fight. Fastest lap points like that might make all the difference. It's P18 in Japan. After a P22 start, I'm a little bit underwhelmed with that. But we had to take the medium tyre so much further than we would... or we had. They were so much more worn than we might have liked them to be by the time we were able to get back to our sauce. But Mercedes won too. And Lando Norris in P3. Congratulations, George. A race winner for the second time in this save, I think. And I'll show you the driver's standings. Uh, 130.4 was Charles's fastest lap. Mine was a 132.2. Pierre's was 133 flat. So my fastest lap is better than Pierre's, even if he finished in 17th in the end. Albon, well, Joe Granue flew up to 14th. What happened there at the end? I, oh, no, Al Albon was 16th, wasn't he? No, ignore me. Never mind. I'm full of nonsense there. Right, so uh, Drivers' Championship, pretty tight right now. Charles Leclerc by 22 points to Carlos Sainz. Max Verstappen is in third. I apologise. Max is in third in the fight. And then it's the two Mercedes. It was Max that was two points behind Carlos. So Max Verstappen, unfortunately, falls further behind. George, though, up to 248. And Lewis, 247. And there are 41 points separating the top five drivers. And the Constructors Mercedes are closing up on Ferrari as well with that 1-2 there. So it's going to get a bit tasty in the final races of the season. We're still trying to get to level 15 as a team, acclaim-wise, so we can get another sponsor on the car and some more money coming in. Although financially, we're not in too bad a position right now. It's just resource points. Really need to get some more resource points in. It's the United States Grand Prix coming up next. Uh, we'll do rate training for our teammate. Get the aero team happy. Team acclaim will come in handy. And I will do probably the, P the second driver PR filming. Because I don't really want to affect the aero department or the morale of any of my departments at this particular moment in time. We have 1,200 resource points. We know where we're going to spend them. And $5.17 million in the bank. Uh, well, I need, to, I need to just start upgrading this stuff, don't I? So let's... Let's do... As well, I can probably do... Oh, they're immediately adapted. Okay. They're immediately adapted. That's good. I've got 256. Let's do the weight reduction one as well. So we're going to need still another couple of thousand resource points plus. But we should get everything adapted for the next season before the end of this season. That's the plan in motion anyway. Get some more resource points actually as we advance forward here, won't we? So we should be able to do something else too. Unfortunately, it means we can't develop any further. But we should at least be able to make sure that we are race legal for next season. Now, we haven't actually gained enough there. Only 150 throughout the course of the week, which is frustrating. Um, yeah, I only get 25. 25 because I haven't done the resource point generation on either of these. But it's so expensive. $3 million to up the resource point generation from my aerodynamic department. 2.2 there. So let's do that whilst we've got the money. Uh, pit performance, slightly improved. Pit performance is fine as it is, actually. Um, I'm not going to spend anything on personnel at this stage because second driver isn't really much of an issue right now. Resource point generation from durability, marketing, 3 million, 1.5 million. I can afford that. Possibly affects team activities will be slightly increased, but that's a mare, really. Uh, can we do anything corporate-wise? I need to be a higher level, don't I? I need to be level 15 as a driver as well before I can boost my resource point intake, which is going to be a pain in the backside. But we might as well do the driver acclaim and the uh, power mapping boosts there as well. Driver market-wise, at the minute, I think I'm probably just going to have to save money now between now and the rest of the... Uh, rest of the season. Teo Porsche is up here as a 68 rated level 9 driver. I've got enough to renew his contract at the minute. There are some better... Well, Zhou Guanyu is currently the lowest rated real life driver, I presume. I don't 
think there's any other F1 drivers down here, is there? No. Unless... Where is... Latifi 71 as well. Latifi 71, Joe Guanyu 71. We could go for someone like David Coulthard, Felipe Massa, Nico Hulkenberg, or Mark Webber next season. But I don't know if we'd have our facilities advanced enough to be able to adequately entice them in for next year. But certainly, they are an option at 4 million. Latifi, 7.5. See, why would you pay 7.5 for Latifi at 71 rated when you could get a 71 rated Zhou Guan Yu for 3.75? It's just the driver level of claim is higher. So at the minute, Zhou Guan Yu is probably looking likely to be my teammate next year. Maybe even Oscar Piastri. We try to save some money and throw, throw the rest of the money into the, the development of the team and then go... Hell for Leather in Season 3. We shall wait and see. We'll see how much money we've got available to us at the time. Jensen Button's only 5 million. The Legends certainly are, or the Icons, certainly are lower value for their overall rating, aren't they? Definitely. 9 million for a 94 rated Ayrton Senna, whereas you could pay nearly 9 million, 7.5 for a 79 rated Mick Schumacher. So certainly the, the Icons are slightly lower, or significantly lower. Right. United States Grand Prix next. I do like Kota. I don't know whether it will be any good, but certainly I do like Kota. We'll see if we can pull something out of the bag. That will be in the next video, though. Be a couple of days in coming. I'm not streaming tomorrow, uh, which is Thursday, as you see this, but I will be live Friday. So only a day's break, and then Friday and Saturday we'll be streaming as well. So we'll be able to get the uh, United States Grand Prix and the Mexican Grand Prix done. Uh, on Friday and Saturday, and then it'll be Saturday and, Saturday and Sunday uploads for you guys here on YouTube. So do make sure you come and join me on Twitch and watch them live if you'd like to. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and drop the video a like too. And I will see you guys YouTube-wise next time.